Hi, and welcome back to Twitter 101, a series to help you understand Twitter. This is part four, who sees your tweets? Hi, this is Professor Nick Carbonaro here at Long Beach City College. You can find me nickcarbonaro.com, Professor Nick Carbonaro on YouTube. Um, YouTube, just search Professor Nick Carbonaro, go to, prof or go to youtube.com slash Professor Nick Carbonaro. Like always, since we're talking about Twitter, you could always tweet me at NJ Carbonaro. And today we are going to talk about who sees your tweets. So unless it is a direct private message, right? Let's get that out in the open. If unless it's a direct private message um, from you to another person, that's the only privacy you have on Twitter. Everything you send out, people can see. Now, even if your account is private, and yes, you may not have people seeing your thing, but there is always a thing called a screenshot and screenshots are forever, right? So somebody that is private with you could take a screenshot of it, upload that as a picture, and then people see your tweets indirectly like that. So um, without that, that's against etiquette and ethics and stuff like that. But when we're talking about what people see with our tweets, there are three different ways to get your tweet out into the public. And we'll, we'll talk about these different ways. But if you want to catch up on our series, like I said, this is part four. So we've had three other parts. The first one was all about uh, what Twitter is. The second one was about retweets and mentions. The third one, uh, the, the previous video to this, and I'll post it um, on this video as a card so that you can go back and watch it, is about, uh, is about um, tweet loopholes. Well, today we're going to talk about not a loophole, but a method to actually get your tweets out there. So if you, if you, if you follow along with us, I want to ask you who sees your tweets, right? Who sees your tweets? So uh, the, the first one that we could talk about is this, is that your tweets could be either public, which is a regular tweet with a mention, and we talked about what mentions were, with a mention not starting the tweet. And I'm gonna show you examples of each one. So everybody sees that. Your followers, the followers on the, um, uh, the, the your followers see that thing happen, right? People can see um, that, that you're talking about. It's public, all your followers see what it is. Now, even if they search it on a, on a, on a search option of it, they can see your tweet as well. Two is a semi-public tweet. So it's still public, but you know people would kind of have to search out for this, meaning this, you start the tweet with a mention. So the first one, the public one, you didn't start the tweet with a mention, it was built into the tweet. Second one, you actually started it with a mention. And what it does is, is that the exchange of tweets can start without disturbing either follower. So if I tweet to, to my family member something and I start it with their, with their handle, only me and the person receiving it would do it. The other people, my followers and their followers, we may have different followers, won't see that tweet. And so we do that without disturbing. Is it still public? Yes, you could still search it and it's viewable and you could see that whole, um, that's where you see the Twitter exchanges when people say, oh my gosh, they, they were fighting on Twitter. That's what we see. The third one is a dialogue. So this is one that you may actually see in tweets and you're like, why did somebody put a period before the, before the at sign? Well, it was done specifically. It was, it was a strategy used in the tweet so that only all of your followers see what you tweeted. So it, it's, it's a dialogue. It's, it's you start a discussion and everybody else sees it. So maybe you see something, um, maybe Pepsi had a commercial, right? They had a controversial commercial a few months back. And so you may start off the thing saying uh, period at Pepsi, right? Not the word period, but an actual dot, right? And that's why I put the dot there, dot at Pepsi. Um, what do you guys think, right? And that creates a dialogue. Only your followers get prompted about that thing. And so they can comment on it and then, um, or reply to it, which is the same thing as a comment section on Twitter. And they can see what's going on. So let's see this, right? Let's see, let's see this in action. So I'm gonna take you through three tweets that I did for my lecture in class a few few months ago, a couple months ago on it. So this is the first public one, right? One of my favorite groups out there, they recently disbanded was Pentatonix, right? And so if anybody knows who Pentatonix is, what they do is it is all acapella music, right? And they came out with a video of Bohemian Rhapsody, which was pretty cool, see it April 7th, this was a couple months ago. And um, so as a business major, as, as a business instructor, I said, you know, people talk about automation killing jobs. 
at PTX official, that's their handle, that's their username, killed machines in the music industry, right? And then I put a hashtag on there and I'm gonna do a whole separate series on hashtag theory later on. And so I embedded the link, which we talked about in the last video, but also I put PTX in the middle of it. So that means PTX was notified, my followers were notified, anybody who searched it would see that tweet. And eventually, you know, since then I got a couple more likes and a, probably about a retweet or something, but I was doing it for my own personal reasons, right? So that was my public tweet. If you put your thing in the middle of it, if you put a handle in the middle of it, everybody sees it. Now let's see this semi-public tweet, right? The semi-public tweet. So for instance, the Long Beach City College Business Club, I'm an advisor to. Uh, again, this was done back in April when school was in session, but I said, hey, LBCC Bay, that's our handle for the business club, business club, um, business administration and economics. I said, can't wait for the next business club meeting on Thursday, right? So the reason why I did it as a semi-public one between me and the business club is because the business club has followers within their people within their with they have followers on their Twitter handle that may be related to the business club right maybe some of my followers are from out of state they're 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 other teachers they're their family members they don't need to care about seeing us on Thursday that's that semi public it's like having a conversation at a at a bar right think about social media as a big party right and you go to a party and you could yell something from from the top of the thing and say hey drinks on me and next thing you know everybody's getting drinks, they all heard you, right? But you have conversations, right? Is it still public? Yeah, somebody could overhear it, somebody could look at what you're saying, but for the most part, your conversation with somebody at a bar is one-on-one, is -on -one, and that's what the semi-public tweet is, right? It's that one-on-one, -on -one, but still out in the open. And so, um, it says, can't wait for the next business club meeting, maybe they retweet it later on, all their followers now see it, oh good, business club meeting next week, so next Thursday, so that's great. The last one that we're gonna talk about is dialogue, right, so again, I have followers, LBCCCOS, which is called LB, the, the Computer and Office Studies Department. The social media class that I teach is, is currently right now being taught with the COS, so we have two teachers in the room at the same time. So I said, um, LBCCCOS, get ready for Twitter lecture tomorrow, hashtag um, GBiz25 at LB City College, right? So the, at LB City College, anybody that sees LB City College can see that, that's great. But the reason why I started it with a dialogue of LBCCCOS so that all my students, now maybe not all my students are LBCCOS students, but they're all my students, right? And so now they see that and then they say, oh, what's COS? And now they can click on it and go through. I don't need the COS students who don't take social media to, to do it because most of them don't. They're mostly doing other type of stuff. Ours is the business major. It's, it's part of part of our certificates, part of our other stuff like that. So most of my students want to take that class. And so I can notify them, hey, we're doing Twitter tomorrow. See, this is what you're missing out if you're not taking my class. So uh, getting ready for Twitter. And again, putting that period before the at sign notifies my people for a dialogue, right? They could comment on it. Oh, what's, you know, they could press the reply button right there on the bottom left. So. Um, just a few different ways that we could find out who actually sees our tweets. And so if you like what you see, follow me on, on, on YouTube, uh, f follow me on Twitter, right? Subscribe to my channel, uh, go to my website, nickcarbonaro.com, and you will find all this information. You could look at my YouTube, you could find out where, where uh, which classes I teach, how to register and everything like that. So with that, I will see you next time. We will be going over part five, the fifth and final one of why you would actually use Twitter, right? We talked about the functions of it, but now we're gonna talk about why it would benefit you. So with that, have a great day and I will see you next time.